it's eight o'clock and to follow the tradition of vidya i shall call the meeting to order this is yet another episode of marvelous medicine i think is the 48th or the 49th and today uh, it's without vidya because she's busy with a family um, function and i'm standing in for her but why will you missing vidya badly and actually this is a very very important meeting where we had two real jains into different fields talking and you know uh, you'll watch for what i said and the, when the uh, speech is over the to start with the, you know in a hospital the operation theater is the most sacred place i remember professor venkatesamy keeps saying that is a temple so he always <laughs> they should be hushed silence and that is where uh, the, the 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 most activity intense activity of hospital goes on day after day table after table and then there two group of people uh, in unison work there the one are the surgeons at the foot end and the other is the anesthetist at the head end and you know uh, i can't imagine myself being born again how how i can't be in a operation theater for those who are not inside the theater is not so easy to understand there's a wonderful wonderful place and magic happens there there are times when you know there are trouble but then you know we know there's a head and there is some very able people who will bail us out and today's session is something about how surgeons and anesthetists interact what is the relationship and how uh, they carry forward uh, the tradition that happens in the operation theater and to talk about the relationship we have uh, professor sridhar my teacher and my guru and mentor to so many so many and i'll ask dr raghavendra to introduce him uh, thank you dr radhakrishna <clears throat> good evening everyone who is listening to this program i think is going to be a very great program uh, because sridhar you know is well known speaker and he's going to keep us all spellbound huh? now it's my honor and privilege to welcome and introduce dr k sridhar who is a um, uh, working as a senior consultant uh, surgeon at uh, sims hospital adabanni since uh, maybe for about 8 9, 9 years or so see yeah. and um, you know see i i had a career of nearly about 40 years still continuing and for the past 30 years or so i have been associated with dr sridhar who is my i can say proudly my my surgeon my mentor my guru my well wisher and above all a great human being okay so as always you no know, the surgeon and anesthetist relationship is supposed to be you know uh, a described as shadow mesochistic reaction um, uh, relationship where there is love hate relationship is always there but we never had such a relations and uh, of of the all the surgeons i've had in my career so far i think i would rate dr sridhar as the one who really influenced my life to a very great extent and we are here to listen uh, from him about you know uh, and he really uh, considers anesthetists uh, as you know as very important people uh, very important member of the team and gives a lot of respect to you know, anesthesiologists i have never seen him uh speak in harsh tone to anesthetists he may sort of you no know, uh shout at his assistants his sisters not is right sometimes they get really short temper not but he never ever has shown his temper to anesthesiologists and there are so many other fine qualities with him um we may not get the same kind of relationship uh with many other people actually um but no thing is now see we are everybody is working different uh, diverse uh, situations not some in the private sector some in fact some in the public sector not so there are whenever this uh, surgeon anesthetists are interacting there are going to be some sort of friction and skirmishes arising now and then to tell us more on how to make it quite smooth and work well for the benefit of the benefit of the patients i am inviting dr sridhar to no to, to, uh, to begin his talk to add a few more uh, things to your introduction sir the dr sridhar is a very very renowned plastic reconstructive hand surgeon and he's held all the highest positions possible as an office bearer in all the societies concerned the speciality and then he was the vice president of uh, 
a senior vice president medical in sims uh, before he took over the position of uh, vice chancellor in uh, srm university and now he is multi talented not only is a great speaker thinker uh, philosopher uh, spiritual person is also a great writer and of late he's been writing blogs on the freedom fighters from tamil nadu over to you sir thank you very much uh, radha krishnan and raghavendra raghavendra always has a very nice word for me uh, as our relationship has been for the past 30 years as he said it rightly i'll be sharing my screen now and radha also we have a relationship has been there for a long long time i suppose you can see the screen now yes sir okay so respected host radha krishnan and the moderator who is an anesthesiologist raghavendra left side i have the surgeon and right side i have the moderator so the marvelous medicine today's topic being the relationship it is just coming together of the surgeon and the anesthesiologist and how to improve the relationship i always had great anesthesiologist who has been the partner with me i won't even call them as a team member i must call them as more as a good partner in the endeavor to treat the patient my father was a general practitioner between 1930 and 40 he was a physician he dispensed medicine like a pharmacist he did basic blood urine stool test and smears just like a lab technician primarily his practice was obstetrics including mid cavity forceps application he did wound suturing abscess drainage including parotid abscess surgery for piles fistula wound care reduced colis fracture and applied popes also give ether anesthesia when his colleagues did surgery jack of all trades but today so many specialists are trying to compete with same area general surgeon ent surgeon surgical oncologist plastic surgeon maxillofacial surgeon all of them are contesting and competing for the same zone then one man was doing everything now everyone wants to do the same one so that is the problem in this web anesthesia also get caught in this web it is like a spider all of us and in that way so where is the question of all of us coming together 51 years i have practiced as a doctor 45 years as a surgeon and 41 years as a plastic surgeon i started with chital forceps formalin tablet dettol and lysol which was like ganga gel anything you dip it in and then take it out it becomes purified my journey through the years i have seen many changes ether pentathol tubercurarin and flaxadin from the anesthetic side and now we have an anesthesia station we don't have just the boy who's operator a sophisticated advanced theater facility and a csd which can match any standard in the world my journey through these years have seen all these changes but anesthesiologist is an inseparable companion lifelong for a surgeon and the vice versa the relationship has many facets to start with it used to be one at the mercy of the other then it became one dominates over the other then they start having respect for each other and then they consider most important member of the team and finally we reach a level where we are great friends and colleagues catheter mount and seek connection oxford tube in child's mouth and the heart in our anesthetic mouth because we never even put a sticking plaster over the tube connection it is left to the surgeon to fix the tube with the towel over the draping and you can understand every time the seek connection will slip from the catheter mount and then you could see the anesthesiologist in turbulence but 
we had such great anesthesiologists who never used to get patta we will just say sridha the connection is just off just a moment and then slowly they will put their hand underneath the cloth and start palpating sorry for the word but that's what they used to do vulgar fellows but you can understand the trepidation they never had pulse oximeters they never had monitors the only thing was the left hand feeling the pulse and the right hand ambulating those were the days with these great anesthetists i worked and had blind intubation for such people awake intubation and blind from that stage we have now come to where we have an endoscopic intubation they have also progressed along with me techniques have changed but not my anesthesiologists all of them remain from that time of ether that time of laxadil to today's modern relaxants and endoscopic intubations in any team members meet as strangers first they work together try to understand each other and continue if they feel they are compatible now you can understand whether they are compatible or not in the left side but they have worked for such a long time as a team member now we did surface a questionable surgeon anesthetic possibly some surgeon anesthetic relationship meeting together maybe by chance in a hospital or an office working together maybe by circumstances both of us are posted in the same theater no other go holding on together maybe by compulsion by the boss who makes all of us work together you could see here two of my anesthesia colleagues they are standing along with us in the team and that man was holding on together all of us so it is by compulsion but coming together is by choice i have worked in all types of hospitals teaching government institutions corporate teaching and non teaching corporate hospitals clinic and private practice in small hospital the scenarios are entirely different from one another government teaching institution rarely surgeons have choice of their anesthesiologists corollary to that anesthesiologists also don't have any choice about their surgeon they can't say that i can't come you could see here again two of us my colleague balakrishnan and i along with another plastic surgery colleague and you could see two of the anesthetists who have been working with us for a long long time rao and nagaswami many public hospital you find anesthesiologists have an upper hand anesthetists feel the surgeons depend on them and they can dictate you can see here the thumbs up in a government setup litigations are less try and do whatever is just possible less accountability if not interested it can be left to others i am not giving this i can't intimate i can't do this surgery you send it elsewhere doing or not doing has no bearing on the income those considering this as just a 9 am to 2 pm job are the thorn in the flesh none of my colleagues or we have ever considered that as a 9 to 2 pm job we all felt we are together to treat the patient that is the major difference in relationship this applies not only to the anesthetist but also to the surgeons if you look at tamil nadu especially chennai all patient centric department in government hospitals and colleges are forerunners in establishing centers of excellence in our state neuroscience institute cardiac science institute intensive care started by our own anesthesia team by t s srinivasan and the orthopedics and plastic surgery each one of them in the government hospital established as one of the premier institutions in the country in a corporate sense the surgeon has got the choice the pista surgeon has a clear edge over the anesthesiologists some of them feel they are more powerful as they generate more income and the anesthetist depends on them that's what the surgeon thinks more diagnostic equipment and instrumentation in treatment has revolutionized healthcare now now the specialists have started becoming procedure specific 
specialist. I do only CABG. I do only joint replacement. I do only endoscopic procedure. I do only spine. I do only hand. I only aesthetics. The same way naturally, anesthesiologist also has become a neuroanesthetic, cardiac anesthetist, intensivist pain management specialist, partly drifting away from the family to a closed group like the nuclear family. Originally, we exist like our Hindu old families. Now it is like husband, wife, and two kids, a nuclear family of a neuroanesthetist, cardiac anesthetist, or so on and so on. Private practice in small nursing hospitals, nursing homes. Hospital's choice of the anesthetist. The hospital says, I have these guys coming here regularly. He will look after. Then limited equipments. Both surgeon and anesthetist most of the time will leave the hospital after the surgery. Now here, unless and until you have confidence in each other, the surgeon has got a confidence that the patient will recover beautifully. And the anesthetist has got a confidence in the surgeon. Within this period, he will finish it and then he will do it. A good job. It's very difficult to work in a private setup. Where olden days we used to do incisional hermia without a boil separators. This man has given me spinal in a nursing home which did not have a boil separators. For me to do an incisional hernia lower down by a spinal anesthesia and the ambu bag and oxygen cylinder. You can understand this. All these questions of one upmanship over each other arises. One way we think about ourselves and not the patient. And also consider the other as O and not as a partner. Everyone wants to fight for his space, trying to push the other out. This is the tendency we have now. Let us not forget our profession came into existence for the sake of patient. Our lives revolve around them. We learnt from them. We yearn through them and we exist because of them. As long as we understand this, there is no question of fight between an anesthetist and the surgeon. Our approach must be patient-centric. Give him the best available treatment by the best available person with the best available equipment and infrastructure, yet at affordable cost. None of my anesthetists in private practice are where anywhere in the smaller hospital, have ever said, unless and until you give this much money, I will not give anesthesia. Or grumbled ever when I say the patient is poor. That is something which we have to appreciate. This will be possible only if we come together. Primum non nocure. I will prescribe regimens for the good of my patient according to my ability and my judgment and never do harm to anyone. Never do harm to anyone. That is what meaning of primum non nocure. To achieve this, every possible expertise must be utilized. You can just have a look at this. A small baby with such a big tumor in the gluteal area. By the time we remove, I think the amount of blood loss you can understand. On this side, I have a microsurgery wherein I don't want the guy to even shake a little bit of millimeter his hand. And here we are sharing. And then why sharing? I think we are exploring where exactly is the airway. All these cases, if we have to have a good result, we need to have a cooperative college. The only way not to harm is to utilize the best available expert. You just look at this. I would never have attempted the surgery in this, but for Dr. Raghavendra. This puny child with the deformity here and then a cranioplasty. This is a craniofacial surgery with advancement of the sagittal suture under the surgery. And then you get a result like this and an awake child who is beautiful is mainly because I had an anesthetist who can understand me. I have never had the problem of my anesthesiology partner. May it government, like you can see Raghavala there. Or may it in private, in smaller places. You can see Dr. Natarajan, who was with me here in smaller nursing homes he used to give, apart from being in Stanley. Or in a corporate setup, like you have Raghavala. All of them have been my partners, my colleagues. Even today, the others who have retired, 
I think we are in touch with each other as the family member even today. That itself shows the amount of relationship which you have built over the years. And it is not just a surgeon and an anesthetist. He knows best just like you know what is best for the patient. So mutual respect is the key. For example, if you say Nagaswami had a promotion to become a chief in a distant hospital, he said, I declined the promotion just because he wanted to say in our own department. That it shall show the amount of the relationship which has been built over the years. The motto of anesthetics is cura vitam or cura vitae or cura vitam. Their concern for patient is as much as mine, if not more. Cura vita means the care for life or concern for life. So that is what he is there for. So as long as the relationship between you and the anesthetist is bound by that man standing in the head end, so that I just don't bother about the care of the life because he is there to take care of that. Working together needs an objective end. May also be out of necessity. Like you have a flood. That is a necessity for you to serve. Or you have an emergency like that. It is a necessity. Holding together may need a binding force like a needle. But coming together is a sankal. Needs understanding, respecting each other. And it is voluntary. Nobody can force this on you. We always feel our department includes our anesthesiologists, our nurses, and our administrative staff. You can see here my department. On the left-hand side, you can see here our anesthesiologists and the nurses and administrative staff behind. Because we consider this as a family. We human beings are actually a social animal. You watch when you're driving in a highway, you will always see four or five cars together. You will see the guy behind will catch up with you. And four of you will always go together. And then there will be emptiness. You watch a highway standing. You will see always they group together and go. This was something which was observed by one of my mentors, H. Srinivasan. He always used to say, we always move together. Like in the hall, you will suddenly see all of us will be talking. Then for a sec split second, all of us will be silent. You watch it in any hall, dining hall. You will realize that, that basically God has created us as a social animal. We like to get together. It's in our instinct to be social. Still, we find it difficult to come together as a team. Why? You can see here the Tekon 2018 organized by Raghavendra. One of the important orations he asked me to deliver, not an anesthetist, that itself shows the amount of relationship we have built. Why don't we come together then? Adi Sankar has said, problems are within you and solutions are also within you. Look inside before you search for it outside. So you have to find the fault not on the other. You have to fault, fault on yourself. Tat, tuam, asi. That means that is there in you. He told about God, but I am telling about the false also. Then the personality and the attitude. What is personality is mine. But the attitude depends on you. Now, the personality of this tiger is to attack. But the attitude is, because I am just caressing it, it is just keeping quiet. You can see this nicely. So it is sleeping almost by with my caress. So the attitude depends upon your relationship with the other, not because of him. It is yours. The complex there is feeling of inferior or superior. Lack of knowledge about the other guy. Not ready to share the revenue. Of course, the ego, which is rampant in our country. Lack of understanding the other guy's capabilities. His strength, feeling an insecurity. Look at this. A surgeon, an oncologist, plastic neuro, ortho anesthetist. They all look as if they are holding their hands together. But you see here, anesthetist wants to give pain relief for a back pain. Ortho person says it is his. Ortho says pain is his, but the neuro guy says it is mine. 
But when I say peripheral now, I say it is plastic, but neurophils it is his. And the plastic surgeon says, BCC is mine, but Anko says it is his. And the general surgeon says, where do I go? I do all this. So even if we want to get together, there is a considerable overlap, which we have to accept and go. That holds good for anesthetists also. That holds good for all of us. Don't say, no, I don't want to team up with him. He also may have his capability, which is what you have to utilize. Many feel that speciality does not get due recognition from public, from other medical professional colleagues. Yearning is important, but more than money, everyone wants recognition. The greatest problem is we don't recognize their good deeds. If you can look here, I think it is again Dr. Raghavendra only doing is an ultrasound for the block. This is true about those who don't see patients directly, like a radiologist or a pathologist. Now the anesthetists also, some of them feel that way because they see them for a very short period without being anesthetized. Just the pre-op check. I, all my anesthesiologists used to visit post-operative with the patient. That makes a difference because I also feel they have seen the patient post-operative. So any of those anesthetic complications, they will manage. And the pain relief, they will give. So that is also their duty from their point to see that we work together. All my cases, pain relief is done. And all my cases, the anesthesiologist sees every day if they have put in an infusion. Typically, a radiologist growth, you see, Olden days when we used to take rounds, our boss will tell, order for an x-ray. Just slowly a progress radiologist. Then we, boss used to tell, hey, ask for an x-ray. Then we used to say, send a requisition. Now we ask for OPD. So from order to ask to request to get an OPD, the radiologists have traversed. You look at this beautiful flower verse. And you can see here the modern art which is painted. These are all flower ways and modern art because of our ignorance. This is a tractography done by the radiologist. I don't know how many of them know such a thing is possible. That is why we were not respecting them thinking that they take only chest x-rays. Now they have traveled miles and miles away. Therefore, now we ask them what to do. Anesthetist also stated as a nurse anesthetist. Then the junior doctor acted as an anesthetist. Then we had qualified anesthesia with a diploma. Then we have a consultant anesthesia with a degree. Now you have a specialist neuro, cardiac anesthetist, pediatric anesthetist. We are made to believe that some are secondary specialities and are dependent on a primary speciality like yours. It is so bad. You look at this case, which was done again by myself and Raghavendra. We thought that the whole stenosis of the trachea, the ENT surgeon also has done an endoscope and then said the whole thing is blocked. But my radiologist could see that there is a hole there. He felt that in an MRI, which is dynamic, you could demonstrate to me, Dr. Sridhar, it is just a one centimeter obstruction, nothing more. Goals up again for Cristiano Ronaldo. Many times does he go to the wheel and pull the pin. Who may be Maradona, Messi or Ronaldo or Ronaldinho, but you cannot claim the game alone. Without the contribution from your teammates, Ronaldo could never have put that goal. It might have been a fantastic goal. It might go in Ronaldo's name. But you can see there are four of them.
revenue generator is not an original. Revenue generator will generate only if the ultimate result is good. Ultimate result will be good only if your treatment performs also well. Therefore, without him, you cannot generate the revenue. Let us say that we people say, certain specialists say that I generate so much of money. Then can he operate without an anesthesiologist? No. That is because it is a burning ego. It is not right to have a burning ego. On the other hand, you have to burn the ego. Lack of understanding of others' problems. Now, these are the typical two things I have told, where many plastic surgeons fight with the anesthetist. The first one is the POP. I have done a tendon transfer. Now, as I am applying the plaster, they cut off. And then he gives jerks, all jerks, before my POP sits. And then the entire surgery goes for a flop. All these two hours of surgery, but all our anesthetists know this. So they are very good that moment I start closing, they start titrating the relaxants. This is an understanding. It is not something like they are fighting with me, I am fighting with them. Look at this again, the same. A flap which is taken from the forearm to the nose and then stitched in place. Unless and until she wakes up slowly, and the pain-free post-op, it is not possible to retain this. And that my anesthetist knows very well because I know him, he knows me. It is a relationship built to over the years. Now the other way around. It's a low-weight child, 68 hours surgery for this child. You expected 350 millimeter of blood loss. But the total blood volume can only be 640. You've got an indron chest wall here. Massive blood loss when you compare out of 640, 350 goes. Indrawing chest wall with a respiratory problem. Child will have hypothermia. Whose baby is this? Mine or the anesthetist? Mine is a set of procedure which I know the steps 1, 2, 3, 4. But here is the anesthesiologist who has to manage the hypothermia, who has to manage the difficult airway, who has to manage the blood loss. Therefore, I think his contribution in the child's recovery, if not more, is as good as mine. As long as I understand this, then there is no friction. Oh, this is a lovely one. It's somehow missed. Not moving. Let us learn to acknowledge the strength of others. When such due recognition is not given, then the colleague can never be part of your team. Is this possible without an anesthetist who understands us? Every piece, both oral cavity, nasal cavity, everything is fixed. And you can see the right tube also pass through that. And you can see here the tube. Therefore, yes, tracheostomy is the answer. But sharing that airway, and ultimately you can see here to get this result, his contribution he is really great. Of course, you can see here one more thing. That is a nylon you can see here. I also reconstructed the nasolacrimal duct so that there is no epiphone. The doctor-patient relationship has changed now considerably. We had patients in my early days. Then they became clients nowadays. But nowadays they are called as customers. 
because we have stopped administering the hospital and then the management people have started coining these words. As far as we feel still they are patient, but they consider them as client or customer. But therefore you expect more accountability. Therefore I wouldn't like to venture on having an anesthetist who cannot understand any of those what I told. However skillful the surgeon be, he can never, never achieve success without his colleague. Greatest enemy to knowledge is not ignorance, but illusion of knowledge. See, there's a great saying what Stephen Hawking, he said, I know everything, what he knows. This is a common thing which you can see, a comment. Oh, these all have done many. What is this? That type of an attitude from a surgeon or an anesthetist is bad. Wisdom is knowing what you don't know and knowing what we don't know and choosing the right man to do is, is important. Therefore, you have to collaborate, communicate and deal with conflicts. Collaborate? Yes. Way back in the early 90s, we started doing submental intubation. So this is something which saves the tracheostomy just for 24 hours to 48 hours. This is nothing but a knowledge transferred from one to the other and the other one accepting it. Suspending the tube from above is another thing which I used to do. You can see here from the oral cavity or the nasal cavity, the tube goes directly up. Therefore, you can shake the head whichever way you want. And also you fix it to the septum. You can see here in both these cases, there are no sticking plasters anywhere. ECG leads is another problem for an anesthesiologist in a burn case like this. So I started devising this, wherein I used to take a hypodermic needle, bend it down, and then connect the leads to that. So this way, we have started doing together small, small inventions. Then we had a protocol for craniofacial, which has been published. This has been devised by me and Raghavendra along with the pediatric intensivist. So all these things have to be done before I start my case. And naturally, he will take at least 45 minutes before I start. There's no point in me grumbling that he is taking one hour before to start because I want my patient to be safe. And all these things have to be done. Therefore, I even don't go to the theater until he calls me. Commonest reason for dispute is, again, lack of communication. This is just a different demonstration. It's not a plastic surgery and anesthetist thing. You're only talking about the communication. I still remember one of the days, one of my surgery teachers asked me, have you done the PR for Raman? I have done it in the ward. So he said, I have. Then he said, you come here, you stand with me. Then he asked the others near the theater. Those days, what will happen is, all the patients will be brought to the theater and kept in the pre-theater area in a ward. And all the patients' relatives will be standing outside. So one of these guys went there and called Raman, Raman, Raman. And then the fellow came. He pulled his lungi up and started putting his finger one after the other. Poor thing. That was not Raman. That was Raman's relative who was anxiously waiting outside. Waiting for the patient after surgery to recover. When he went and called Raman, Raman, he thought something wrong with the Raman. So he came in without uttering anything they said. Then this man was standing there and laughing. Then he asked them, did you feel anything? So none of the students said they felt anything. They said, I couldn't feel anything. At least you would have felt warm, he said. So the lack of communication is something which must be the reason. Look at this. 
you do a high flow av malformation and do not tell the anesthetia how much of bleeding you expect then he says reserve two unit prc two units fpp on platelets five hello i have done this many times without going through the av malformation and my anesthesiologist knows that this is not required but there are cases where high flow av malformation results as dr uh, nagasami told me one day that he went to the surgeon started exercising and the pulse was rarely palpable but the cardiac and lungs were all right then he told the surgeon any how you have cut and brought hypotension so at least finish off the surgery when it is not bleeding it is up to me to bring up the patient out and promptly he brought the patient outside recover and the surgeon went ahead control the bleeding and also finished off the surgery this is again the confidence the anesthetist had on the surgeon and the surgeon who had the confidence on the anesthetist that he could get them back there is no point in telling there is a here with referring a patient with brachial plexus block for surgery and then friend it he doesn't he doesn't realize that you are going to do a stimulation on table unless and until you tell him or until and unless you talk to him how will he know that he should not give relaxant so your proper communication again then you come and then start shouting saying oh how do you expect me don't you know that you have to have a brachial plexus that i will stimulate no it is the surgeon's duty to inform the anesthesiologist what he expects because he knows very well you are going to anesthetize if you relax so we always call this as a raw deal what is raw deal reliable to deliver accessible for discussion available at the time of need assertive but yet accommodative and accountable workable in a group reliable to deliver this is a 800 or 900 gram baby of udavum karangal which was left in a gutter and you could see here the rats have bitten it and then when it was picked up still the child was breathing and i had raghavendra giving 900 gram weight surgery in an incubator and they did the grafting and the whole thing here so we were way back that shows the amount of confidence both of us had at each other accessible for discussion i don't think this unless and until i tell him i am going to split to open the maxilla and swing it off or i am going to remove the mandible here and then enter here and it is going into the skull base how on earth you expect your anesthesiologist to give anesthesia available at the time of need now there are anesthesiologists i used to work with random when nobody else of my team was available for some reason or other they all will come for elective cases but in the middle of the night when you say that i have a replan they won't even pick up the phone so that sort of a relationship is something which is not conducive for your work and we had on the other hand stanley many anesthesiologists who will say emergency anyhow you have to do get the patient in so that is the type of work we have to reciprocate i always like our ganesh choudhary's jokes yeah we celebrated friendship day yesterday we are even friends for life but this patient is unfit means unfit till i receive all investigation well i think assertiveness is required in the interest of patient safety and as long as it is concerned that way then i don't think there is any dispute now this is another thing which agavendra and i start doing quite often he is tying a thread through the incisor in the neck or the narrowest portion and then fix it up to the endotracheal tube and then you can shake the head whichever way you want with a fluxometallic nothing will happen and you are suspending it from above and you can keep painting 
after paste and here filament there over the endotracheal tube. Many of you would have seen this. Early celebration. Didn't realize it is going back to the goal. Never stop short until the task is fully accomplished because you are accountable. A typical case here, you could see here, there are some who will just leave until after the dressing is done leaving it to the, after recovery, leaving it to the junior anesthetist. What you could see here, just as it was being shifted, the child arrested. And immediately it was resuscitated. You could see here the values, potassium 9.3. And the child is well. I've been seeing the child for the past now five years. I'm following it up. No problem. That is mainly because my anesthesiologist stays and shifts the patient to the recovery. All our anesthesiologists used to see them in the recovery. Workable in a group under varying situation. When I do a craniofacial, I always tell, keep the BP low. When I do a polycization, I tell, don't allow BP to fall. This is something exactly opposite of what? But that is how we work and that they understand. Respect, building relationship is the most important way of ethically building a practice. As we expect him to give us respect, let us learn to respect his knowledge and wisdom. If he can be an authority in our field, so he is in his. We are building a lifelong relationship with people and every great relationship has to be built on trust. Trust. I believe his capability. Look at this again, a syringe. In this syringe, we just cut it on the side. This was Raghavendra, another invention. This is way we could put this in and then through this then endotracheal show through a scope. Trust the team must understand each other. If we can look at this video, hope this video plays. We must have clear and good understanding. This chap never gave an instruction, you must fall back. You just said fall and they will hold. He trusted his colleagues and he did a wrong thing. So the communication must be correct so that you can communicate with your anesthesiologist what you want. View yourself from that position. When I want to try a newer technique, why not my anesthesiologist? If I can allow my resident to do under my guidance, why not he? This is a question which we must answer. Unless and until we allow him also to train his youngsters, next generation of my plastic surgery colleagues will not have an excellent colleague anesthetist. So therefore, every right he has to start something and train. At first, they will always ask, why you are doing it? Why this job always does this? I have done many brachial plexus block without even wearing glove. And now this chap wants uh, to locate it. Correct. I being in Stanley for 15 years, on an average used to give eight axillary blocks a day or a week, let us say, on my duty. That holds out to about nearly 52 weeks, about 400 to 500 axillary block per year, 15 years. You can understand 
I can possibly give accelerated blah, closing mind. It's not possible for everybody. Number one. Number two, as we are developing, advances are there to locate the drug. Then why not? I think that is the right thing to do. Now after this, we are locating it with ultrasound. So my question was correct. At first, they will ask you why you are doing it. Later, they will ask you how to do it. This is how most of us progress. I am a short-tempered guy, as Raghavendra said, that I never shout at Anastasia, but I shout. Radha Krishna always will tell, I think he's the one who says, I don't know why people shout. But somehow, I belong to an older generation, possibly I lose my temper. And my Anastasia is all of them know what, how to tackle that. This is awareness about my emotion and awareness about their emotion also. You can see here, whenever I lose my temper, This lady has got a collection of all songs of olden days, of my college days. She will slowly start it from her phone. So they understand me well. That is a relationship. This is another thing. Avoid gossiping. I have seen many discuss in the lift, discuss in the canteen. Oh, that guy's case, you know, the whole chest was open. But this is not the first time, you know. But he has seen it now. But he will tell. It's not the first time. Most of his cases go like this. I don't know how he operates. Never do that. Humor has a role to play to pull your leg or pull his leg. That always just creates, closes the gap between you. So this is another two of Chaudhary's jokes. You are taking so many pricks in the spine. Are you giving me a spinal anesthesia or acupuncture anesthesia? Fantastic joke is that. And the same thing he said, the anesthetist is congratulating an orthopedic surgeon or possibly a hand surgeon like me. Congratulations, sir. You got family planning award from government for doing painless, sutureless sterilization with heavy shots of X-ray. So fantastic. Anesthetist pulling the surgeon's leg and the surgeon pulling the anesthetist's leg in the lighter way always bridges the gap. Accept and celebrate difference. I have disagreed with many of my colleagues, including my dear anesthesiologists. Respectively, we disagreed it did not come in the way of us staying together. We may be having different view, different perspective, different approach, different strength and weaknesses. Gaps in our thought processes are these. Gaps will always exist. However wide the gap may be, attempts must be made to bridge the gap. Even if it is slender, even if it is an uphill task, it will always help to achieve our ultimate goal. Water will find its level, which one of my teachers used to say. A good professional attracts a good professional. Water will seek its own level. This is a simple truth. We are what we gravitate towards or attract. This is exactly how I have said in her Mudurai. For those who do not understand Tamil, I will just translate it. Just like the beautiful swans, always seek beautiful lotus ponds. Well-educated people will always seek the educator. The ignorant and the fools will be with their own company, like the crow seeking a dead carcass. <laughs> An anesthetist versus an anesthesiologist. I always call them anesthesiologist. It is like a surgeon versus a surgical specialist. An anesthetist has got a qualification. That's it. But an anesthesiologist he is a highly competent who builds a team. And he has got this much of a professional thing to do. He is a mind reader. Like I told you, 
my anesthetic colleague will start the music when I am in short term work. He stores the jokes and then corresponds with you. He's got three eyes to see all over the place. And he's got a large bladder to retain because he has to stay for people like me who operate for eight hours. Getting together paves way for coming together. You can see the t-shirt which I am wearing. It's again another Radha Krishna's uh, invention. This is a t-shirt of what we call as a yellow wipers team. We had two teams in Sims of all consultants. We started having a get together and competitions with each other, playing all sorts of games that brings us together, paves way for coming together. I am because we are. That's what Ubuntu says. You know that these jokes of somebody gave a basket full of fruits, kept it there and asked these African children to pick up, run and pick up. They all held their hands together and then went there together so that they all can have the apples. That is what is the Ubuntu philosophy. I am because we are. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about we working together as one. This is the one moving. I would like to end this. This is a Kailash trek which I did two years back, three years back. And this is a saying which says, Sanchara Padayo Pradakshina Vidhi Stotrani Sarva Giro Yadyat Karma Karomi Tadyat Akilam Sambo Tavaradana Yadyat Karma Karoti Tadyat Sambo Tavaradana Whatever I speak to my friend or anybody, consider this as my Stotra to you. Wherever I walk, consider that as I am doing a Pradakshina. So when I walk in the hospital, it is nothing but I am praying to my Lord and going around him. And whatever job I do towards attaining, unsolving the problem of my society, any work I do, you think that is your Aradhana. Therefore, the work I do along with Raghavendra, what I was doing with Raghavalo, Nagaswami and Nadrajan and my anesthesia colleague is nothing but the Aradhana to the ultimate reality. God. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful uh, lecture. And I think we need to go through it again to digest every inch of it. And I'll ask Dr. Raghavendra uh, to give his talk. And I think Dr. Sridhar has uh, described Dr. Raghavendra as, as many terms. He doesn't need an introduction anymore. Dr. Raghavendra, please. Uh, Dr. Sridhar, can you stop screen, sir? I will, uh... oh, yeah, please. I will stop share, yeah. I'll stop. I, will, uh, I just put on a few slides and... Uh... Okay. Uh, not going to be as exhaustive or as uh, in-depth analysis of the relationship between surgeon and anesthesiologist, but just a few slides uh, based upon a, a hypothetical question which I raised in the you know the Facebook group the anesthetist uh, some time ago, and I got a very diverse response from the people, and uh, just only about ten slides. I won't take much of your time. So this cynical description of anesthesia is the half asleep watching the half awake being half murdered by the half fitted. Okay, but um, doesn't describe being always the same term. So it was, you know, without surgeons, we all know anesthetists are going to be unemployed. And without anesthesia, patients would prefer to keep their gallbladder as prepuces and ugly noses. So they both need each other for a good relationship. But I, I say informed, you know, I did a you know, sort of a, I raised a question in the Facebook group. My question was, if to all the anesthesiologists in the group, if you have to wind up, wind back your ears and want to start 
again as an anesthesiologist, how many of you would like to take up anesthesia as a profession? And uh, uh, the, I got more than about 330 uh, answers and a very phenomenal uh, you know, response I got. And uh, um, the response is quite varied actually. See, the, many of the anesthetists working in the foreign countries, the Western countries, UK, Canada, and the USA, none of them had any station in saying that, yes, I would like to become an anesthetist once again, if uh, given a chance. And most of the ladies, I mean, the, the women practicing anesthesia in India, they all came out with, uh, you know, with again, same answer that, yes, we, we chose it by choice and we like it and we like to uh, take it up once again, if given the choice. But the majority of the men folk, majority, I mean, say maybe one or two uh, here and there, but then majority said that, no, they'll never do it. I did a big, big mistake. I'll never, never take it up again. Now, what are the four points which they sort of uh, um, point out is three things. As you know, already has uh, touched upon these points. One is the dominance, the dependence, and the denial of decision making. See, I think uh, it was uh, those days you now when ether was started, the gadgets were not much, only a symbol booth mask and ether. And the surgeon just delegated one of his uh, assistant to give the ether and then keep a watch over the vitals. And uh, there's nothing much he can do except uh, feel the pulse. That's what it, it was given. But over all these uh, years and decades, you know, we have developed a lot of sophisticated um, gadgets and drugs and uh, come into picture. So we are more scientific. And then we are able to maintain the, the homeostasis very well. Okay, so that sort of sense of dominance that is the surgeon had a responsibility for the patients. So he was sort of giving instructions and that dominance has continued uh, over the years, even to this day. Not all are fortunate to be having a great surgeon like Sridhar. We have a very setups in various places and all. And then this dominant factor is one which the anesthesiologists who are working in the private sector, especially small sectors, small uh, practice, the small nursing homes, which they face day in and, and day out. Other one is dependence. So they have to depend upon a surgeon all the time. Otherwise, you, you just listen to me, otherwise I'm going to call somebody else. These are frank and then blunt um, uh, no accusations or whatever uh, uh, they face day in and day out. And they are decision making. Many of them are forced. That's what the most anesthetists say that you no, know, they are not given a choice as to what they should be doing, giving uh, to give safe anesthesia for the patients. It's all you not know, determined by someone uh, like a surgeon who tells them give a spinal, don't give G. I want nerve block, I want this like that. No, that's how I've been going on. Are there other factors like you no know, lack of recognition? Remuneration is always a sore point. And respect. I don't know. I think, uh, first of all, not even known as persons who are doctors. And then um, respect, probably, you know, it is all people who really you know, realize the value of anesthetists will definitely give respect. But respect also, you know, they have to get from other people like the administrators and the general public. And how much they get this is actually, you know, it's a real question mark. Now. And remuneration is always a, a sore point because a surgeon gets a particular amount and anesthesiologist is, who's tied to him gets only a fraction. This has been a, a really a sore point all these years. And then, uh, and uh, contrary to what situation uh, in, uh, in Western countries where the anesthesiologists make as much money and sometimes even more than what surgeon makes, here it's only a fraction and that is always, no? that's why they feel that, look, I had a choice uh, to become an uh, orthopedic surgeon or a gynecologist, but I gave it up and I thought I liked anesthesia, but now I really regret it. This is the comments which I been I got actually when the risk was in and all. Another thing is who is the captain of the ship? That concept, you no, know, surgeon always, many places they've got egos. None of them show the same kind of maturity or understanding as a, an ideal surgeon like you know Dr. Sridhar, and then uh, he will throw his weight around, and then uh, always a tussle between the needle and the knife, and blood versus brain, and then uh, so uh, probably a surgeon uh, would like to take the upper hand in most of the situations now. But remember that anesthesiologists are the ones who sort of uh, can take a patient out of a 
That's my situation. So probably he is the captain of a sinking ship. Now, what are the expectations of an anesthetist? We do expect uh, polite behavior, not abuse an anesthetist in front of other people, be fair to them, and then uh, take responsibility for both good. Most of the surgeons, what they do is whenever there's uh, some sort of achievement. See, I remember that, you know, some of the institution where I worked, our uh, landmark number of surgeons reached for 10,000 CABs and all. There was a press conference, and then uh, there was some uh, you know, felicitation going on. And then uh, none of the credit for, for going through all these 10,000 uh, CABGs was given to anesthetists who stood with them all these years. So, um, so that is what I think is, again, another uh, sore point. And uh, recognize anesthesia as speciality of its own. Still, people are living the past, and they think that anesthesia is just a sub-speciality and uh, a dependent speciality. And then fight for the requirement. Surgeons always ask, I'm not talking about the situation where I am working. Uh, we have excellent surgeons. Dr. Radha Krishna is so receptive to my uh, requests and demands now. Sridhar, of course, uh, always is there for support. But uh, in many other places, the surgeons will ask for a black machine, latest one, three chip camera and all these things, but never allow the anesthetist to ask for even a pulse oximeter or a cap. That is actually another uh, grouse. So, and allow them to take breaks from the monotonous grind is again another uh, problem. See, in private setup, you have to be there all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all days in a year. So, if you decide to take off uh, sometime or other, then they try to change to some other anesthetist, and then uh, that, that, that ends the relationship. So, that is, uh, uh, I mean, they, but whenever they want to go on vacation, they go to play Europe and all, they go take off now, they tell the secretary, look, I am not going to see any patients for this much of time, so don't accept any uh, appointments, etc. But then they never allow them anesthetists to take such a break. No? Then practice ethical manner. Okay, so whenever a surgeon uh, uh, indulges in some malpractice, automatically it is going to involve his anesthetist also. So, and then, uh, so I, I think it's all intertwined. No? Both our uh, relationship is like such that, you know, they're going to be taken task if and something occurs. No? Then very sore point is, now, to allow them to take adequate remuneration. Many places we find, I know I um, uh, it is not fabricated. Surgeon may take about one lakh in some bigger cities now, but don't give more than 5,000 to anesthetists. For the amount of work he puts in, it deserves much more, but then it doesn't, it never happens, they pay. Okay. And then discuss the requirements of surgery and see if it's feasible. See, you should tell what exactly are his requirements. Instead of blaming in the middle of surgery, look, I wanted this, you didn't get this. So, so be more transparent and all. So these are the expectations. Now, nothing much about this, uh, um, uh, you know, requirements are not much. They are quite, uh, you know, they just expect them to warn them or tell them before what exactly they want. You know? So these are things which uh, an asset is, any anesthetist will expect uh, from, uh, from a surgeon. Uh, I'm talking, uh, you know, broadly, I mean, sort of, on behalf of, I, I would, other anesthetists, you know, in the Indian subcontinent. Um, now, this is very surgical lies. So it's a lighter vein. So <coughs> surgeon will always say, no, don't take it for granted, whatever he says, no. So put the patient to sleep, I'll be down in five minutes. And actually the, uh, uh, he may take about one, one hour to come. He's old, but he's fit. But actually he's going to be a real challenging case. You will like her, she's old here. I don't toss much blood, we don't need any. But actually that patient is going to bleed like a pig. Don't intubate, it just is a quick snatch. Again, the communication problem is going to take much more than what you're expecting and all. I'm just going to open and have a look and closer. Actually, that's not going to be. He's going to have much uh, you know, more elaborate plans when you start actually. She will die if you do nothing. So forcing hands, I'll be finished in 10 minutes. This is actually a gross, um, gross inappropriate uh, statement, and sometimes it takes me about 10 hours after saying 10 minutes. Not. Okay. So, and then, uh, in a, especially in a public sector, uh, Dr. Sri always mentioned that the fitness of surgery is universally proportional to the time of the day. So, at the end of the day, when I feels he has to find some excuse to leave work and go, so he is going to not go and give fitness that easily. Not. So, what I find is it's a dual system. So, where the anesthetists and surgeons are getting equal uh, remuneration uh, package and all. 
uh, and they not depend upon each other, then I think they tend to run away after a particular number of hours are reached now. So they just somehow find, find some ways to postpone things now. So again, like when, as uh, this is by Ganesh Chaudhary, as uh, again, uh, um, uh, not told by Dr. Sridhar. So how much to charge patient for anesthesia? My, my choice, if anesthesia is going to be like that, the surgeon is going to say, retort, who my call is my choice, okay? And the uh, best way forward is to appreciate and understand it is with each other. Okay, so it's been excellently, you know, very well uh, said by Dr. Sridhar, quoting all the uh, examples and the very beautiful photos and instances now. Um, nothing much more to say from my side now. Okay, so, so this is what I wanted to sort of, you know, um, uh, you know tell uh, about our feelings and all these things. I've been really fortunate to be working with uh, real uh, good surgeons, Dr. Patel, Radha Krishna inclusive. And um, now I had a pro problem. I'm reaching the end of my career, actually. Maybe a few more years, that's all I got. But um, last few years have been very, very, very uh, fruitful and, um, and productive for me and very satisfying also. So if uh, someone asked me the question, if I had turned back my you know, life and then uh, whether I would like to choose uh, anesthesia once again, yeah, I can say that I would do again, definitely. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, sir. And this, I think, is an inspiration to a lot of young anesthetists. Uh, can I ask Dr. Nagasame to unmute and uh, please come in? Professor Nagasame, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Radha and uh, uh, Shaka Sridhar. It was a wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, it's not only you reveal your mind about your, what you feel about the anesthesiologist, but uh, our association goes back to the days of your first PD days. You have been a plastic surgeon for 41 years, and I know you for 41 years, right from the time you joined as a MCHPG in Stanley. And uh, as you rightly said, the reason why I denied my promotion and stood back and uh, worked in Stanley till my retirement was that the atmosphere and the working condition. Uh, because I have seen the general side also and uh, uh, migrated to the plastic world. And uh, almost 20 years I worked with uh, Professor Venkat Swami, Dr. Balakrishnan, Dr. Radha Krishnan, and uh, Kapati Gayan, and uh, junior people, uh, RK, and uh, so many of them. All of them have been so good to me. And uh, uh, the the pleasant nature with which they all moved with me and we had no issues as uh, canceling the case or postponing the case and not giving this, not saying fit and all this. Nothing happened. If I, I don't do this case today, tomorrow I'll be doing it as well as I can finish today itself and go. That was the attitude I had. So it, the, the working hours were not time-based. It was work-based. And as long as the patient coming to the general hospital, the poor patients uh, who earn by their daily wages, if they are detained in the hospital for more than two, three days, their entire family suffers because the earning member is going to be in the hospital and the family is going to suffer. So that was the attitude with which we dealt with the patient. We never wanted to unnecessarily postpone and detain them until, unless it was for a valid reason that it is going to endanger the life of the patient. So, and uh, uh, Professor Arvi was so kind to me that uh, he got whatever equipment I wanted. The first uh, ray tube was, uh, you, you'll be surprised, was used in the government setup only in Stanley, even before the private could come. Because I got a few samples from some of my students who uh, brought it for uh, use uh, from UK. And then the first LMA was used in Stanley and... Uh, uh, whatever equipment, in 96, I still remember one of my postgraduates coming for uh, uh, training in plastic surgery. We were doing a microsurgery case with a multi-parameter monitor in the government setup. We had uh, NIBP, we had pulse oximetry, we had etc photo, temperature, everything was uh, on the patient and we started doing the case. And the PG was surprised that, uh, sir, in uh, government setup, 
we have not seen this at all in the general surgical side. How come you have all these things? Then I said it is the surgeon who bought all these things when I said it is for the benefit of the patient. So anything that uh, uh, gets a good result out of your surgery, the surgeons are willing to work and that amount of respect they had, whatever I asked for, they said they knew it is for the benefit of the patient and not by, by personal use. And we had the first ventilator, anesthesia ventilator was bought because for the long hours of... Uh, so surgeons themselves, uh, sir, we uh, uh, pity you bagging for 12 hours with your hands. So tell us if you can uh, get a ventilator. Then I said, yes, it is there, it will be good. So they got the ventilator. So this sort of uh, uh, pleasure I had in working with all the newer gadgets which were available outside in my private practice, I could get it in the government setup itself with these uh, good surgeons with whom I worked. And uh, so there was no confusion, no uh, confrontation. So that was the way we worked. And uh, I thank you once again, Sridhar, for the nice... Uh, uh, I think it's a God's blessing that I came in contact with uh, such good surgeons like you and other people. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Can I uh, request Dr. Vasanti to unmute and uh, come and comment, Dr. Vasanti? Thank you so much, uh, uh, Radha. And, uh, we'll, we'll be glad to see you, ma'am. Your camera is uh, no, off. No, actually, no. I was not ready for this at all. So I don't okay. think. <laughs> <laughs> because this is quite unexpected that you called me to say something. Um, right, uh, like I love my uh, speciality. I love being in anesthesia, and um, we've had uh, a lot of. Of course, I've been uh, like uh, Dr. Um, Raghavendran had said. I have also been in all the. I think I have been in the private sector. I have been in government service for more than thirty years, and first as starting off as a, a tutor, as a postgraduate, and then as a, uh, uh, and then we go on, isn't it? Like you know, and finally as a director and. Thing. I even but what what Sridhar said at several times there are definitely there's a lot of change from what we started off to now definitely there is a lot of change but there are still a lot of uh, uh, gray areas where I think the surgeon as well as the anesthetist must understand each other better I think uh, I think the juniors must learn um, I, I'm sure there's a lot of change but the juniors must learn to do to work together that's what Dr. Sridhar uh, insisted, working together, the attitude that we have towards each other. And remember that the patient is the only important person in the group. It is not the surgeon, it is not the anesthetist, it is the patient. And both of us are working towards the welfare of the patient. So if we have that attitude, I'm sure we'll have no issues at all. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll ask Dr. Karthikeyan, uh... To come uh, in, please. Thank you, sir. That was a really wonderful talk by Dr. Sridhar, as usual, uh, very nicely with nice anecdotes. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when I joined in 97 in Stanley, I was a chota bacha, and Dr. Nagasami was the senior anesthetist there. And uh, he was, I mean, everybody was in awe of him, and everybody was scared to talk to him. But then slowly, that was the time I was first coming to a, a rea interacting with an anesthetist. And I slowly realized interacting with him because he was the first person I met as an anesthetist uh, in a team. I realized that if you are open and you are truthful about what you are capable of, what you're going to do, I realized that he also started respecting me. And uh, this I learned best in one situation the first time when I did my replant, it started at uh, nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. I remember the date also, September 6th, 2003. And uh, Dr. Nagasami gave the anesthesia and Dr. Sugumar was also there. The surgery went on till the evening around 5.45. And I did not get up for lunch, breakfast, I had nothing. And after the surgery was over, I learned that the patient arrested twice and the patient was resuscitated without a single uh, problem with being created by the anesthetist. They handled it so beautifully. That was when my respect for the anesthesiologist grew more than 100 times. Then I realized that that team 
Dr. Vasanti was just saying, we are all working for the patient. So true, madam. And uh, then the, I realized that both of us are working for the patient. And he was doing it so, in spite of being so senior, he was doing so beautifully. And actually, there was another very interesting anecdote. When a patient uh, posted for a groin flap, and a doctor, uh, some anesthetist gave these spinal, and it went in for a spinal shock. Dr. Nagasami immediately came in. I don't know where he comes in from. He came in, and he resuscitated the patient. I was very scared. Now they have gone through a problem that whether they let me do the surgery or not. So I went up and told him meekly, uh, sir, can we cancel the case? So he looked, Dr. Nagasami looked at me in the eye and said, why you have some work outside? He said, no, sir, patient has gone in for spinal shock. Yes, spinal shock, patient has been resuscitated. Spinal is working beautifully. Please go ahead and finish the surgery. Thank you, Dr. Nagasami, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sridhar, sir. And nice to know the excellent work being done by Dr. Raghavendran, sir. And thank you, Radhakrishna, sir, for this opportunity. A pleasure, sir. I'll ask Amit Ghosh, uh, a senior physician and a pedagogue from Mayo Clinic, for his comments as an outsider of these two professions. Amit. Thank you. Thank you, Pata. When I was in Jipmer, I was always a big guy, so... The orthopods thought I'll become an orthopedician and the surgeons thought that uh, I'll become a surgeon. But then I decided to go for medicine. So my surgery senior resident sat me down and said, Amit, always remember, surgery starts where medicine fails. So we are always senior to you. But I wanted to tell him that surgery really does not start till an anesthetist comes in the picture. So an anesthetic starts and then the surgery. Now, one of my favorite things at Mayo Clinic is I always look at doctors who retire and I look at the list. Every month we get uh, September, October retirements. And I'm amazed that people are working here 20 years, 25 years, and why that is happening. And it was so beautifully mentioned in the presentation of Dr. Raghavendran and Dr. Sridhar is the tussle between anesthetists not getting the due, the respects. And so one of the things which our institution really focus on is the mutual respect. But you're right that the, the, the anesthetists get paid a lot more here based on their work and the risk they take. And so they are very respected and they don't feel this tension. And this has to be of great importance to every institution as the leadership kind of looks as to what is happening in the operating room. And of course, the most important person, as Madam said, is the patient. And the need of the patient always comes first. So there can be no institution, however skilled a surgeon is, or however skilled the anesthetist is, if there is no teamwork. And that's one of the thing for any junior faculty, when they come to me, they said, what question should I ask when I go out for lunch? I said, go around and ask, how long has the surgeons joined the institution? Or how long has the anesthetist been working? If they say we are, they look senior and they say, I've been working here for three years, four years, five years, that may not be the right institution for you, which shows that that institution is in transition. There's a lot of fallout and people are not behaving in spite of the fact that they're putting a big sense that they are nice to each other. So communication, communication, respect, skills can be acquired. Uh, you can get a lot of degrees and a lot of things. But if you're not good with your teamwork, if you're not good with your management, you cannot be a number one hospital, regardless of how many FRCSs and uh, FRCPs you have in your institution. And the best and most important thing is uh, talks like this in Marvelous Medicine, where senior faculty members who have spent their life bring philosophy into the practice and really teach us as to why are we in this is business? And to my, my thing to the younger doctors is maybe you're not in the right profession. Maybe you're getting afraid of joining anesthesia or surgery or whatever, and you're not ready to stand up or talk. It is maybe you told, your focus was multiple choice questions and getting in rather than patient care because it's never about you. It's about the service you bring. So these are some of the dialogues uh, which has to happen and not just... Uh, um, preparing a thesis and discussion about patients, but how do you really care about patients? The why and why and why? Uh, you have to ask five times or seven times. And as a patient really told me, I asked him, 
why do you come to Mayo Clinic again and again and again? You already, it's expensive. And why do you come here from Colombia? He says, I come here, doctor, so that the chair in my dining room is not vacant this Christmas. I'm care for my, face, my family and I want to be around, listen to their talks and discussion. It's not about the MRI. It's not about all these things. We know you'll bring a, do a great job. But my main focus is I want to go back and have dinner with my family. And you have made that happen for the last 20 years. So I, I really congratulate uh, Dr. Patta for bringing uh, these valuable doctors, Raghavendran and Sridhar, and their courage in boldly describing what ought to be done, uh, should be done, and what is not being done. And uh, it's such a good song that you're singing. I would say, why not sing it very frequently at your local hospitals, your um, local chapters, national chapters, <coughs> and please, please do it more of it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Amit. Nala, Nala, please come in. Unmute. Yeah, uh, thanks, Radha. Hey, uh, can't just, we can't uh, see you, Nala. Yeah, I'm just in the dark room. Sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> but I just please, like please to introduce share. yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm an anesthetist who's working in Dubai for the past 20 years. I've been in private practice for 30 years. As an anesthetist, I've graduated from JIPMA. Let me just tell you one real fact about anesthetist. An anesthetist is a part of the family, okay? And when I joined my hospital in Medcare, my chairman said, you are the boss, not the surgeon. I was so, so happy. And what we can do as an anesthetist is you can make all your surgeons happy. It's not just you cancel a case. For example, let me just give you a simple example. If you have your own child who's an uh, a hemoglobin is eight grams, but just have to do a meringotomy and a, 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 a grommet insertion because she's suffering from a severe uh, ear pain, you will not cancel the case. I, don't, I do not cancel. So anesthetist has got a different type of responsibility. And me as an, response, as an anesthetist, I have developed a relationship with my surgeons so well, not just, just to agree whatever they say, but not always to disagree. We have guidelines in <coughs> anesthesia, which says that these are the parameters by which you should say, you should cancel, you should agree. But there are cases which he has to be assessed. It's not necess necessary that, that you have to go only with those guidelines. And I have, I have prospered so much. If you want me to tell you the truth, as an anesthetist, I'm paid much more than my surgeons. That's because you bring more business to the hospital. And as a private hospital, we have a lot of restrictions. And that's what I want to come into the picture. In a government hospital, when I was in JIPMA, we just say, okay, we go do a pre anesthesia checkup. Okay, this is this, this. Sorry, we have canceled the case. That, that cannot happen in a private hospital. In a private hospital, there is a correlation between the surgeon who, 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 who makes all his effort to get a patient to the hospital and convince him for a surgery. And as an anesthetist, it is your part to be cooperative with the anesthetist, with the surgeon, and make sure that such things happen. We have been very successful, and we have always made sure that we do not go away from the medical legal aspects. There is also a medical legal aspect which will govern an anesthetist when he does certain things. So a surgeon and an anesthetist should definitely sit together and as an anesthetist, my 30 years, let me tell you, I, I do not look at my anesthesia monitor. I only look at the laparoscopic monitor. I only look at my surgery. I only talk to my surgeon and tell him, what are you cutting? What are you touching? And my surgeon says, hey, what's the BP? I said, so this is what I like. I want an anesthetist to be a surgeon and I want the surgeon to be an anesthetist. That is the best relationship 
you can have in a theater and you should have a you should have a team which is for example in my hospital i have a team which is 15 years all of them have been with me for 15 years <clears throat> so that is the best you can have and you should have accreditation accreditations to be done you should definitely go through all those processes so those are baselines but as an anesthetist please do not hesitate do not think about that the surgeon is a thing i always put my things only with the surgeon i only talk to my surgeon do you want to do this you want to do it now tomorrow whatever it is even if the hemoglobin is low well it's an emergency we have to do it we have to do it but there should be a very very good relationship between you and your surgeon and and that's the best thing that i can have and i have had relationship with surgeons from all over the world just to tell you i have from uh, uh, at least more than 150 surgeons from all over the world coming to my place i have enjoyed my relationship with them we have music in the theater as you always said my all my nurses undergo a lot of stress uh, uh, relief and we do enjoy what we do and I, I i i totally agree with the talk what is going on all of us should take that we are a part of a team and as a team we only want to do something good for the patient none of us should blame each other the blaming is the most important thing that should never happen the surgeon should never say oh this problem happened because of the anesthetist and the anesthetist should never say is this problem happened because of the surgeon both of us should accept that it can happen because of both of us my intubation can 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 cause some trauma there can be a bleed the patient can have a hoarseness of voice so the surgeon tomorrow should not tell the patient oh the hoarseness of voice is because the the anesthetist put the tube and then they uh, talk to the anesthetist that's not the way so we work together and all of us should be together and i can promise you i have had a lovely lovely relationship with all my surgeons we love it we enjoy with my surgeons of course the income there is a difference in the income and let me tell you that you can you can take care of that also uh, we 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 have a we have a we have a we have a choice to choose that if you have a sick if you when i take up a patient with a pacemaker with the angioplasty my anesthesia fees is almost uh, 50% of the surgeon's fees and i i i'm upfront of on on it and the surgeon says okay dr nalla no problem go ahead so this should be a very very healthy relationship it's not just money it's not just only a, a, a service but all of us should work together and i i distribute the whole thing to my whole team my nurses my team my and technicians my uh, my the entire team so you should thank thank you nalas thank you nice thank to hear you. from thank you, you. <laughs> i'll ask uh, ravi shankar my uh, thanks my thanks rada classmate uh, physician ravi uh, can, if, if your comments ravi are you there if anybody from the audience who want to make a comment please before we wind up Now, uh, actually, it's a pleasure and privilege to work with the, these two giants in their own field, and you know, I, I consider myself lucky. And you know, there are lots of lessons to be learned from them, uh, especially Dr. Sridhar, who's been a teacher and a, a mentor to so many. Uh, before the, before we close, I think uh, most. Uh, points uh, about the relationship between surgeons and uh, the anesthesia has been covered here i have only one concern which i'll ask uh, dr uh, dr sridhar and dr uh, raghavendra also that uh, i have seen uh, during my younger days that uh, uh, surgeons used to get restless when the student anesthetist is giving anesthesia trying to do spinal and uh, same way when the junior most surgical postgraduate is uh, trying to 
uh, uh, operate and do some switching, they, they used to sort of reverse the analysis to get restless. I don't know whether that thing still persists. How can this be avoided and how can this be encouraged? Sir? No, I think, um, as I told you, I think if I have to train my student, I think anesthetic is also I've got the right to train him. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a good anesthetic later. That's the first point. Second, you will realize some of them which I told, uh, Nagasami, Rag, um, Raghavala and all, used to even teach a plastic surgery junior how to suture. So when they are there, I still remember when I was a postgraduate, the anesthesiologist who was there at that time told, it is one o'clock. Okay, it doesn't matter. It is Sridhar's first case. So I will give anesthesia. So I think it's a relationship. Absolutely, it's a human relationship. I still remember one joke I would like to tell. I told one day Nagasami, Nagasami, you have been seeing like this. I would like to intubate one day. Then he said, no problem, Sridhar, you intubate. Then he said that, uh, why not I also suture the, after cutting that groin flap, the donor side. I said, fine. The joke was, he allowed me to intubate, I intubated her, then he said, bag, and then he went off. Because he said, <laughs> <laughs> whoever intubates her, the bag. <laughs> Just like a joke. So he was seeing me struggling to bag it for some time and then took the bag from me. That's a different question altogether. So that's how the relationship we had. And always we used to have our lunch together and both of us have a lot of jokes to crack. I think plenty. Even now we are sending each day jokes. Nagasami will send, I will send. Uh, keep sending. Uh, so what I'm telling is it's absolutely really why honest that is not surgeon. I think both of us are doctor. What else are colleagues? I don't think that matters at all. That means you are not efficient. That's why you try to find fault with another guy. I think if you are strong, I don't think you need to worry about the other guy. <laughs> Very well said, sir. Raghavendra, you have any comment on this? Uh, yeah, okay. Depends upon the you know, situation. So whether you're working in a teaching institution or in a public sector. Uh, and again, for the patient also. If, suppose if the patient is a busy sick person and then uh, if uh, a supposedly junior person takes a bit more time, then I wouldn't discourage him from you know, doing whatever he is, but I would always call the senior also, just come in and uh, sort of help him out now. That is what, you know, in a corporate sector, but in a teaching institution, we have a responsibility, as Dr. Sridhar mentioned, responsibility to teach the students. Now. But even the private corporate sector also, we have responsibility because we have got national board students now. Uh, unless we teach them and train them, they will not be able to go further. And I think it's a healthy, you know, trend is to sort of make them do and then uh, they may take a bit more time. Like we have to remember the, ourselves as uh, junior people when we were sort of uh, learning in the early days. So, so we had the same chance with people also. But what I feel is that when they are learning process, especially in the corporate sector or whatever the teaching sector, some senior should be around to teach them the right way. That's what matters more than anything else. It's not just a chance. You have to be there. Don't just sort of ask them to debate and go, go away. No, you be there. So that is how you know, we approach our things now. Thank you, sir. I think uh, you'll all agree that we had a wonderful session. Ravi, your comment? Final yeah, sorry. Comments. Yeah, my, my uh, <laughs> internet has stabilized. I just wanted to say that this was extremely fascinating and uh, I've been listening to it actually quite spellbound. Um, the My only uh, um, comment is my experience uh, both as a patient as well as when my daughter was a patient um, requiring surgery. And I seriously did not think that the surgeon's role or the anesthetist's role was different. It was both. I mean, and I can tell you, I was way more stressed when my daughter had her uh, surgeries done. And, uh, you know, it was I, I didn't think that, hey, I want the surgeon to do really well. I want, uh, you know, it was the team had to do well. So if from, from a patient perspective, I don't think the patient separates the roles of a, the physician, uh, I mean, an anesthetist versus a surgeon. It's a team. So I think from that perspective, uh, you know, you have to maintain it from the inside as well. Because from the outside, we 
don't look at it any differently. Um, uh, we, we want both of you to do the best, um, uh, your very best uh, for us as patients or for our children as patients or for our relatives as patients. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's only on the inside that you have, you know, so-and-so has a bigger role versus so-and-so has a lesser role or the blood and the brain separation or anything like that. But as the patient, it's a holistic thing and it's everybody. So that's, that's the only comment I wanted to make. Wonderful. And it's just, I mean, we cannot separate it. It's, it's your, uh, um, I mean, Dr. Sridhar will understand. It's um, like the Vagar Thaiva. So you, uh, it's, it's like Parvati and Parameshwara. You are in inseparable at all times in, in perfect union. So uh, on that uh, note. Uh, Pata, Pata, can yeah. I just come in? Yeah, uh, Nala, yeah. What Ravi said was absolutely right. Uh, uh, most of my patients whom I've been at, uh, uh, anesthetizing for bariatric surgery, they come and they keep talking only about anesthesia. They don't talk about surgery at all. <laughs> so I was I was surprised that you know most of the surgeons get away. He was doing and some magic have, there. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep we have to keep explaining half the things to them. So the surgeon yeah. spent five minutes. We spend more than thirty minutes, and that's right what Ravi said. It's a team. It's it's basically a team. And 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 end of the day. The team makes sure that the patient is comfortable. And, and that's what we want, a safe surgery, a safe patient, and all of us being happy. Thanks, Pata. Thanks, thanks, thanks Nala. Does thanks, Lata Nala. have any comments to make from Jitma? Lata? Now, there, so, that, yeah, Lata, please come yeah, in. I, I mean, I just want to share my experience, but it's not always it happens. Uh, we had a patient who was a teacher. She was having fibroid uterus. I mean, nothing great, but she just had uh, hypertension. She was cancelled once and then posted next time. Uh, when we used to go for rounds, she used to always tell, I'm scared of anesthetics, I'm scared of... And I don't know why she had that fear. But unfortunately, that it became the truth and we lost her even before we did the surgery. Just after anesthesia, I mean, whatever has happened. So sometimes some intuition for patients, I think. This may not be really true, but once in a while it happens. She used to, I mean, in the ward also, she used to teach a lot of people how to read Tamil and all this. This happened maybe around 14 years, uh, I mean, 11, 12 years back. Just one incident, that's all. It's not that actually, as uh, it was Dr. Ravi was telling, it's very true that we need to work as a team. That's what I wanted to say. Just my yeah. experience once. Now, actually, when uh, the thing mo most patients are scared of is anesthesia, not surgery, sir. Yes. I mean... Actually, they are scared of going into sleep and not waking up. Yes. That is the biggest scare. And actually, I should also say, uh, Dr. Raghavendra, sir, that uh, not many anesthetists will try spend time before surgery to force this fact that, you know, they'll all be safe and perfect and fine. Now, I, I, my comments, again, I also have seen anesthetists, just like surgeons of various types. You know, the anesthetists... Mostly they, their role is in the operation theater and they just don't go and see the patient the next day. Uh, Dr. Sridhar was commenting that in uh, the plastic and hand surgery, it was not that their anesthetists are you know, intimately related to the patients all through their journey. Because maybe because the work pattern is like that, I do not know. Because if there was a possibility of having rounds with surgeons and anesthetists sometime, at least once in a while, I think you will know a lot of what is happening in the ward. And, and so on. It's, it's just my, my uh, I know Dr. Sridhar can comment on this, but uh, I, I always thought uh, anesthetists remain inside the OTs and don't see much of the patients outside the OT. They do. I think, yes, at least for two days they see. Mm -hmm. All those who work with me, at least for two days they see for the pain. And if there is an infusion, most of them, see, if it is a peripheral limbs, either it is an epidural or a brachial plexus, etc., if there is an infusion, they only decide on that. And I always give them the liberty to take a decision on what type of anesthesia to be given. Except if it is going to interfere with my treatment, then I tell them don't do this. Otherwise, I think they decide what is to be given. Except sometimes I may tell it's a very small procedure. I may not take more than about 15-20 minutes. So you just have a line 
when we started clip clip and palette you will be surprised that we don't even start an iv line those were the days when i started my first clip 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 there will not be a drip for palette they will only start a drip and they had only pulse to monitor and the precardial stethoscope period but the progress is different i think now it is entirely different and i think we have to walk with progress otherwise we stop practicing if we cannot walk with progress we must stop practice well said sir the raghavendra last comment before we close oh okay sir actually i agree fully with you that the anesthetist remain committed uh to especially if a major case is say for instance uh, surgery has gone on for almost what say 8 hours 10 hours then i kept overnight uh, in the recovery pc and all and then we do follow them up because we have put all lines and all and then we just take care of them also and then in our hospital we have what's called the pain uh, the acute care pain team is there the physician assistants are there then do doctor say go and take rounds morning and evening and anything which is abnormal or uh, which is needs some attention they'll always alert us and then we just go and see and definitely we uh, follow up patients who are on infusions whether it's nerve blocks or epidurals now so i'm sure that now that continued care and again uh, one more thing is the pre op itself see like you know someone remarked about the patients getting scared about anesthesia see um many times now i tell my uh, registrar or dnb students now uh, to alert me or any other consultant who is going to be involved with the case so we just come and see them especially if it's going to be a difficult case and then we we spend quite some time to you know relieve their you know the anxiety and whatever comments or whatever questions they have now so they we do establish some sort of repo and we do follow them and that's how they remember us also because i remember some time ago one uh, i think i think it was some 20 year old patient came and he has come to see the after gap of nearly about uh, 15 years and we had done uh, together uh, that time uh, about three or four surgeries uh, surgeries at time that that chap remembered me so it's very uh, you know, gratifying now to uh, you know sort of get a recognition from the patient which normally we don't expect now but then he remembered me i don't uh, because he had grown up by the time and become quite fat and then he was quite happy that i was going to be there once once again so that sort of a repo building is quite quite essential actually thank you sir on that note uh... one, one thing shall i say Yeah. Uh, but at the same time in labor room anesthetists when they come to give epidural patients are so 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 happy because you know the pain relief which they get though there is tension for us but because the labor gets prolonged but they are really really very happy that is the that is something which i really really want anesthetists to be around for thank you thanks thanks leather on that note uh, i'm sure we had a wonderful session and any, anybody listening to this i think they'll be a changed person from tomorrow and i am sure across the world there will be a lot of difference in the relationship between surgeons and anesthetists thank you so much sir sridhar sir and uh, dr raghavendra and all others who spent uh, a, a near two hour period uh, uh, in this marvelous medicine we'll meet again next thursday at another episode of uh, marvelous medicine and i'm sure dr vidya will be back at the helm thank you so much and have a great weekend thanks thank you thank you so much vidya should be back again vidya should be back again <laughs> thank you <laughs>